Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is well out there. Okay. And now today we are going to discuss about a very like you know a unique topic from your genetic chapter that is your multiple alleles. Now you already know what Mendel said. Mendel said that for a particular gene or a discrete factor, there are two different variants, and we call them what alleles, right? Like in this particular case, you got two different variants here. One is capital A and one is small. Now where they come from? Okay. Now we know that in a diploid cell or in a diploid individual, for every single chromosome, there are two different homologs present. Okay, so like chromosome 1, you inherit from your father, you also inherit from your mother. Means chromosome 1 has got two copies, one is your maternal copy and other one is your paternal copy. Means these two are together called what? Homologs. Now if you look at one particular gene that is present on chromosome 1 maybe, okay, that particular gene has got two different copies. One you have inherited from your mother, we call it maternal level. The other one you have inherited from your father, we call it paternal level. That's what Mendel basically said, that one gene has got two variants, okay, he called dominant and recessive, yes, that can be, as I have shown here, it's a dominant L, capital A, and this one is a small L, that means what, it's a recessive L, but those two L's are coming from both of your parents, one from your mother, the other one from your father, and a diploid individual or a diploid cell can always have just two L's for a particular gene, that's quite true, but when it comes to a population, imagine a human population, okay, for a particular gene, there could be many more alleles to be honest. Okay, it's not just two alleles we know. Okay, for a particular gene, there could be many more alleles, which could be more than two. Okay, and sometimes it can even like up to like 1200 alleles for a gene. There are genes like that in human population. Now we are looking at a very simple example here. Now imagine a gene that controls what kind of sugar modification will be done on the RBC cell surface. And the gene in human population, we call it I gene. This one, we call it I gene. Now this I gene, it has got three different variants in the human population. Now if you look at them, one is your capital, I mean like I, another one is IV, and another one is what? I. Now the first one, it can add a very unique sugar on the RBC cell surface. Okay, and that sugar is, I'm writing plus because it adds that sugar, okay? And it's styled galactosamine, the sugar that it adds. And this IV, it adds simply galactose. And I, no such modification. For I, no such modification is there. Now, each, see, you can see that this gene is all same. But whatever they are making, the alleles, they are a bit different. This one can add an acyl galactosamine on the RBC cell surface. This can add galactose and it does not add such modifications. ILA, it has no modification like that. Now, if somebody asks you what kind of xenotypes they can create, what would be the possible number of xenotypes that these three alleles are creating? There is a very simple formula to do it. Now, if you look at this formula, the formula is that if n is the number of multiple alleles or simply say alleles for the multiple alleles if n is the number of alleles okay total number of xenotypes possible is n into n plus 1 divided by 2 now in this case we have three different alleles for i gene now if I place 3 here instead of n, you can easily guess that it is going to produce what? 6 different genotypes. So it's very easy to calculate, right? So you can just add, put the formula in there, just put the value of the number of alleles and you can easily get the total number of what? Genotypes, right? Now let's see how it handles the blood group types. This particular gene, this I gene, it can control the blood group. And blood group is actually nothing but the, the sugar antigens that are present on the RBC cell surface. Let's take a look at it. Now before understanding the blood grouping system, what you have to understand that there is a very peculiar relationship between these three different alleles I have just discussed. Now what is that relationship? Let's take a look at it. There is a unique relationship that says that IA and the IB allele are co-dominant, means they are both 
equally strong means when they are present together they are going to exert both of their phenotypes means IA is going to put anesthal galactosamine IB is going to put galactose in the same time when they are present together because they are equally strong but both of these alleles are dominant over the IL means just like we have discussed this dominant and recessive allele in genetic chapter you have already learned about it that I is kind of like you no know, small t and IA and IB like what capital T they are the dominant alleles and this one is the recessive allele okay that means when I and IB are present together they are going to put both anesthetic galactosamine and galactose in the same time but when any of the IA or IB are present with this I allele okay then the IL's product or IL's activity will not be present in there because I is a recessive allele whereas I and IB are dominant let's take a look at the situations now if you look at the genotypes I said that we can calculate the genotypes and I say there are six different genotypes for these three different alleles. Okay, you have already seen how to calculate it, so let's take a look at it. Now imagine if the genotype is IAIA IA or IAI. Now see, IAI and both it is homozygous condition, and both the alleles are what you know the dominant alleles. In this case, IA and I, this is a heterozygous condition, but you know that I is a recessive allele, so there will be no impact of I. Now what will happen? But because of this, if you look at the RBC cell surface, I'm showing this anesthetic galactosamine with blue colored circles. So you can see lots of anesthetic galactosamine are there. So I'm saying this blue circle means an acetyl galactosamine. Now, in this case, this RBC, in this RBC, it has got only anesthetic galactosamine on its surface, and we call this as what? Well. A antigen, right? And the blood group will be A. I'm writing blood group here. So blood group A means there is A antigen that means anesthetic galactosamine on the surface of RBC. It's very easy to understand. Now imagine this situation. IBIB or IBI, the same manner. IB is a dominant L, I is a recessive L. This one is homozygous condition, this one is heterozygous. What you are going to get here? Now this is the RBC. What I'm going to do, I'm going to represent galactose with the help of this red circle. Okay? Now if you see, now look at the RBC. It has got only galactose all over it. Now in this case, when galactose is present, we call this as B antigen. So B antigen is nothing but the galactose modification on the RBC surface and the blood will be what? B here. Alright? Now imagine a situation where both IA and IB are present together. Now this is a heterozygous condition but as I already told you, the IA and the IB allele, they are co-dominant, they are equally strong. Now in this case, this RBC is going to have as you can already guess, because both of them are going to exert their what phenotypes. So you can see there is an acetyl galactosamine on its surface, and because of this IBL, there is also going to be what galactose on its surface. Means it has it has represented both A antigen and B antigen in the same time. So what we will say here that it has got A antigen and B antigen both. So the blood group will be, we call it AD here. Now imagine a situation when there is only I alleles present. Now, as I already told you, I allele does not add any kind of sugar on RBC. So whatever the like normal glycosides or like normal glycoproteins or glycolipids are present on RBC cell membrane, they will remain unaltered or they will remain unchanged. And due to which the RBC will remain just like this. That means you can say neither B antigen nor what A antigen we will say no antigen at all and if there is no antigen that means the blood group is what you can say this is O so technically O blood group means there is no anesthetic galactosamine and there is no galactose on the RBC surface I hope you have got it now now imagine a situation that there, there is a person with O blood group means he has got no antigen on his RBC now you were transfusing him the blood from a blood group type. 
Now he is going to experience this anestyl galactosamine or antigen for the first time in his life. Now what he is going to do, he will treat it as an antigen and he will start creating antibodies against it and there will be agglutination reaction. So there is no way that A blood group or B blood group or AB blood group compatible with O blood group because O has O does not have any antigen on it. Okay, so O does basically does not recognize any antigen okay, because it has no antigen on it. Okay, and there is a like self and non self recognition system in your immune system. So basically any kind of like A, B or AB blood group you put it inside, basically O is going to experience the O blood group person or O blood group person, he is going to experience for the first time some change in his antigen types on RBC and he is going to react against it. Okay, that's why O cannot accept blood from rest of like blood types. Now, if somehow O donates the blood, if O donates the blood to A, AB type or A type or B type, the point is that O does not produce any antigen on its RBC surface. That means it cannot create any immunogenic response. So if some person who has got like AB blood group or B blood group, A blood group or even O blood group takes the blood from another O pass, O like individual, O blood group individual, what happens basically because O has got no antigen on it, there will be no immunogenic response and the blood can be accepted very easily. So that means O is the universal donor who can donate to everybody technically. If you look at AB, now AB has got all the antigens on it. So AB basically recognizes its antigens. Now if you put A blood group, it has already got the anestyl galactosamine or A antigen. So it will not like you know reject it because it already understands what is A antigen. Now if you put the B blood group into AB, now the same thing, it already understands the B blood group because it also has got the B blood group. Okay, B antigen. So it will not reject it. And oh, yes, it can always accept. So AB is the universal acceptor because it already understands the antigen. And O is the universal donor because it does not produce any antigen. So I hope you understood what is the blood grouping system and how they work, what are the multiple alleles, and how they actually give rise to different sorts of phenotype. Okay, so I hope you like today's lecture and I'm going to upload more and more videos in the future. Thank you so much, everyone.